The observer would like to advise that the following video comes with a trigger warning. The content in this video is of a sensitive nature, so please beware that the topic of this video may trigger you. The observer recommends that you consider your own mental health before you watch this video. Just wait in morning. Yeah. Oh, so it's the poll used to beat Sarah. So I'm going to go through all of this um, tonight anyway. And I'm going to be using the Guildford Dragon actually because they've got really up to date stuff. Um, so they've just kind of put out a picture of the poll that Sarah was used to be um, beaten to death. But I'm going to go through all of this today. I actually want to talk about another case this morning, um, which is another really brutal case to be fair that's just been through trial, um, which is the case of Isabella Wilden. Now, we are waiting for sentencing to come back, which will be about December the 13th. So I wanted... No, it's fine. Thanks, Kay, for let me know. Um, I wanted to talk about what happened in that trial today. Um, it's a little bit of a devastating outcome because the mum in that case only got done for allowing the death of a child. Um, and once I tell you about some of the facts in the case, thank you for the candy canes, um, I think people will be pretty grossed out that, that that's the issue. One thing... Um, one thing I did want to say, morning everyone, um, which is good news because I didn't realise since all the baby pee case and stuff, there has been a change in the UK law, um, which I was looking into legislation this morning, that if you get found guilty of allowing the death of a child, they've upped the maximum sentence from 14 years to life, which is good. Um, thank you, because that means even in the Isabella Wilden case where her mum has only been found guilty of allowing the death of a child, that we may see a good sentence there. Morning, Holly. Um, it's unlikely that it'll be greater than 14 years, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, so Georgia, the new law came in in 2022. Now, in the case of Baby P, whose mother is back in prison, by the way, because she violated her, her terms and conditions of her parole, um, she actually only got a life sentence with a maximum of five years. So she served about four before she was released the first time after what happened to him, which was awful. Um, in the case we're going to talk about in a minute, Isabella Wilden, the mum in this case is probably one of the worst people I've ever seen in my life. Um, the things that she did, even after the death of her child, was just so disgusting. The way she just carried on with her life, like the very night her child died, she was seen in the pub with the killer, um, laughing and joking. They took... Isabella dead to McDonald's, etc. Um, just dead in her pushchair. Um, she literally has no nothing maternal about her at all. Morning, Jojo. So the fact that she wasn't found guilty for murder, I just think I don't know if I'm alone in thinking it, but I personally believe if you're in a new relationship or any relationship and yeah, and your partner kills your child and you don't do anything, that you are just as bad you're worse you're the mother you're supposed to protect your child same as if you're the father like in the case of Arthur like you are supposed to protect your child like it's your child so if you're allowing and Isabella's mum admits in the courtroom like I just sat back and did nothing I didn't, I didn't help her like I saw him beat her I saw him do this I saw him do that and I just did nothing like I didn't do it I just did nothing um and when, when we learn about in the case of Isabella Wilden that this man was in Isabella's life 36 days before he took her life. 36 days. And in that 36 days, he absolutely brutally abused, beat and tortured this little girl. Um, and her mum just declined to get involved. Um, and even after, she can't even say that she was abused as well or that she was just scared because she's seen in the pub on the same night Isabella was dead, left in the shower. Um, she was seen joking and laughing in the pub, drinking with the father, um, not the father, the abuser. Um, Melinda's brothers has to wait another two months. What is this coming up on my screen? Let me just quickly read this. Is that some kind of light bulb? Gift ambassador full of beans. I don't even know what that is. Uh, 
bean points. I cannot see what's going on here. Something to do with the little faces full of beans. I just don't. I have no idea what's going on. Um, I said something about being full of beans. Mm. Yeah, she did do the same. More than everyone coming in. Um, so yeah, um, I just want to say as well about the Liam Payne case. Um, I just, I haven't done a video about it because I just don't believe what TMZ is saying. And now the other media publications like... Um, the mirror and stuff, I started posting that as well, that he was trying to climb down the, the balcony and stuff. I just don't put any weight in it at all. Hey, Holly. Um, because we've already been told that they were kind of, he was half passed out or if not unconscious when he fell from the balcony. And now we're hearing that he was passing down a brown holdall that said for Liam, full of pills. Um, then, then he actually was trying to climb down and the hotel knew that he was trying to climb down. He told them. So I think TMZ, exactly, Paula. Remember what they said last time? There is pink cocaine and it hit the media like fuck. Everyone was saying Liam Payne's on pink cocaine, meth, all of this stuff because that's what we were being told. And then a week later, it's like, oh no, sorry, it's a little bit of cocaine in the system. So I'm not even reporting on what TMZ is saying right now because I see no fact for it at all. And I see lives firing up left, right and centre and people just going mad about it and it, I just don't see it to be true. Um, this would have all been brought out on the first day, right? When when Liam was found dead, the hotel would have said, look, he already told us he was going to climb down. And the fact they expect us to believe the bag was found two days after um, Liam had fallen down. I just don't get it. Can somebody from the Discord just post in the Discord that I am live about to do a case just because um, just to give people, subscribers, a chance to get in because I, I forgot to say anything. Um, and so we'll just share the live in there or whatever. I'm drinking Barry's tea that Kira sent me from Ireland. Um, thank you guys and for the repost as well. Um, loads of you shared it. I had a right shock this morning. I was um, I was in a battle. I wasn't battling, I was just watching it. Um, Angie was battling Dave Durand and all of a sudden she's going, I really like Hayley Comet. And I'm just like, stop saying that. <laughs> She's like, I actually really like her. I mean, I've had my opinion on her. Like, she's held several 27-hour lives about me. Um, she's like, I actually quite like her. So I've had loads and loads of messages this morning going, I didn't know you were in the cult. Um, when she said it, I was just like, please don't. <laughs> Alicia's texting me saying, I knew you were friends with Angie. I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. Of all the people on the app to start liking me now. Um, morning, Tom. I just don't need it. Um... Yeah, we'll just give it a couple of seconds to see if people do come in from the Discord or whatever. Um, and then we'll start talking about Isabella Wilden. I will say that... <laughs> just leave me alone. Um, I will say, though, that um, this is a really hard case to talk about because obviously the victim is so young. Um, has everyone had a good morning so far? I begrudge doing the school run this morning because it's so cold. Um, Holly, I'm going to need you to back me. I'm going to need you to join the cult with me at this point. Um, it, was it was especially lovely that Angie decided to say that she was a fan of mine today. Um, because she has been saying some things about Hillsborough this morning that have been quite shocking. Um, so I was just like, not today. <laughs> Do not try and say you like me today. Um, I imagine Observer will be recording tonight. Um, she was kind of saying, um, big up the Sun newspaper and stuff like that, which I believe she was doing just to be, um, antagonistic because she's had a drink already at nine o'clock this morning. But at the same time, I wouldn't be doing that if you're trying to keep Sam Walker on side. Um, or she was saying it was quite sad what happened. Imagine what it was like for those people to be crushed to death. And you've got victims, family members in the comments like, let's not do this, let's not do this, um, in her normal sensitive way. Um, Holly, like, literally, it's a case that I've thought about covering. And I thought about it and I thought, it's still really raw for a lot of people. I'm not sure people would appreciate me covering it. Um, it's one of those cases where um, the people of Liverpool are a really, a really strong group of people and they literally, they've had a couple of cases that have absolutely broken Hillsborough, James Bolger. Um, 
And if you're not going to cover it, thank you, Chrissy, for subscribing. If you're not going to cover it in a sensitive way or you don't have the empathy to cover it, you should never, ever talk about it. Um, and when you're going after things and you know even things like saying, like, Big Up The Sun newspaper is going to get people to feel really attacked. And, and there's people all these years later who are still fighting for their piece of justice. Um it's a heartbreaking case and it's one that impacted so many. It's one of the greatest tragedies that's ever happened um, in the UK. What is the what is the trial at Coventry Crown Court, Tabby? Um, you know what I mean? I, I mean I'm from Glasgow and it's um you know what I mean? I'm I'm from Devon and, and I know a lot of families down here from Liverpool in that area and, and, and who were destroyed. Um the mum who kept her son on life support machine, who was forever waiting for him to wake up, even though people kept saying he wasn't going. Um, there's so many parts of the case that are heartbreaking. The, the little kids that went to watch football that day and never came home. Um, I remember the newspaper headlines, all the, all of the bodies laid out on the pitch to show how horrific it was and just not being able to understand at the time. Um, no, let me have a look at it. Um, not being able to understand at the time how something like this could happen on that level. Um, and, and still today there's been no real justice let me have a look how you spot the last name Yasha Shara H-Y-A that's a long last name Was that the one? Um, I have followed this case slightly I didn't recognise the name then I would normally just recognise the first they're the ones that ref their child starved to death because they refused to feed him because they were, I can't remember what it was, they were, he was suffering from bone fractures, severe malnutrition, rickets, anemia, stunted growth and severe dental decay. Uh, they put him on the really strict vegan diet and wouldn't let him have any nutrients or anything because they be believed it was in his best interest. Have you watched Abused by My Is it Abused by My Mum or Abused My Mum? Because I um I don't think I have seen that. I buried him in the back garden. I do remember this. I did a video about it when it first went to trial. So for anyone who's coming in for Sarah Sharif updates, one of the jurors was ill. Um, I haven't, okay, but I will watch it. One of the jurors was ill yesterday, so they weren't in court yesterday. So they're picking up again this morning with um, Faisal Malik's defence team doing their closing statement, finishing it off. So... Tonight at nine o'clock, I am going to do a Sarah Sharif live where we're going to go through every day of the trial. We're going to start on the very first day of trial with the forensic evidence, talk about the neighbours, the sisters, the text messages, the school, the teachers. We're going to go through the whole entire thing in preparation for the verdict. Now, today should be the last day in court before verdict, which means I'll be able to do today as well on the end of it. So I will literally be giving you the highlights of the whole court case. No, I'm doing it at nine o'clock tonight. So we have today's added to it. I need to get to as many people as we can tonight because I need everybody to know every single part of the Sarah Sharif case. So if anyone has any type of communities, people, groups, anything that you can kind of reach out to to get them here tonight, I need every single person to be ready for the verdict together and to know exactly why we need the verdict that we want. Um, and I still seem to be one of the only people talking about Sarah Sharif and it's really bugging me um, because I think everybody needs to know. I've done a video, Alison. I've done a video already this morning saying that's what I'd be doing tonight because I knew that um, some people really want to watch the live because so many people say to me, like, I want to follow the case, but I've missed the first kind of two weeks of trial. Um, so they're kind of asking me questions about the um, about the birth mum, about the teacher that I'm trying to go back and kind of explain, which makes it a bit fragmented to understand. Um, thank you, Kelly, for subscribing. Thank you so much for five months as well. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, thank you for the gifts, guys. Um, that's what I want to do. I want to kind of do all of the thing. Thank you, Kay, and I will have a watch of that. Um, also on Friday night, just for people who weren't in the live last night, we're gonna open boxes on Friday night and I'm asking people to watch the three-part Netflix um, special that's just been released called Cold Case John Bonnet Ramsey. Now, Lizzie, my mod, has already watched all three parts and she says like it's a game changer, like it's changed her whole view of the case. So I would love people to watch that. I'm gonna open boxes, I'm gonna ask people to come in um, and I want the live to be purely on the new 
John Bonet programme on Netflix. So we've already covered it in the last couple of weeks, right? And we all had our opinion. Most people were saying they think her brother did it. A lot of people were saying it was definitely the family. I said, you know, I, I kind of think there's there's room for the the theory of someone coming in and also the family. It's so, because of the ransom note and stuff, it's so bizarre. Um, so I am going to open box on Friday night at nine and we're going to have a, a kind of talk about what people think about the new evidence brought out by the programme. And it has been promising all year that this was going to be a groundbreaking TV show that was going to change people's minds. So you'll have, if you are going to do that, you've got three, you, it's three hours long. It's three separate hour long programmes. Um, I have proof my dad covered it up. I have proof my mum and dad covered it up. They said the mum wrote it and there's a call to 911. So we, Queen, we've done the whole case. So like, I'm a criminologist, so we've researched and done the whole case. We've listened to the 911 call. We went through the whole kind of case and we kind of did evidence from both sides, whether it be a, an intruder that broke in or whether it be someone in the family. So there is there is reason to believe both could be possibly true. I just think, yes, yeah, so the new one, Kelsey, on Netflix, I think it was released yesterday. Thank you, Chum. Would you consider holding a live about assisted and aliving? I would hold. Um, I don't think I'd open boxes on it because unless someone has been on TikTok a while like yourself and understands the buzzwords, what you can and can't say, I've tried to do it before on different subjects where self unaliving has been the subject. And as soon as you bring people in the box, they keep saying the S word over the live just gets taken down. And it's really hard if people, thank you Tab, if people have had experience of um, self unaliving or um, assisted, they get passionate about it. It's really hard to keep interrupting someone saying, can you not say that word? Um, because the live will just go. And it's ridiculous on an app that could be really powerful that we can't talk about certain subjects related to mental health like self unaliving. Um, but unfortunately, it's one of the words will get you taken down straight away. Um, I said it once in a case by accident and a big thing come up on my screen saying you need to call 999 if you're thinking about it right now. Um, and then I was getting messages from TikTok saying um, we've got reason to believe you might hurt yourself. And they also have picked up on people crying hysterically on live before. Like if people get really upset, they'll instantly start sending you. Um, why can't I cancel that battle? Um, they'll, you know. There's a, the, you, you can't really say the G-A-Y word. I say it sometimes and kind of get away with it, but I've lost live access to it before. And Gracie, my manager, has said to me, it's because you said G-A-Y. And I'm like, but you can say lesbian, but you can't say G-A-Y. And there are people who are out and proud and absolutely want to be able to say that word. And there are couples who are G-A-Y who want to talk about having children. And um, I say drugs all the time, Queen. I'm literally... Um, People, there are some words that people make up you can't say, like rape. And I literally have said a hundred times over, I will lose my account every every day over not being able to say that word because I'm not going to say a woman was R-worded or she was r -ed. I'm going to say she was raped because that's what's happened. Um, and it's really important that we're using that word more and more in society and kind of addressing that that is an issue. Um, so... I got given a list of words by my manager. Um, I'm not allowed to say S-L-U-T. I'm not allowed to say S-L-A-G, which I wouldn't technically use online. You're not allowed to use the word for self-pleasure beginning with M. Um, I've lost a live access over that before when I was doing the Gypsy Rose case. Do you think it was a photographer that was... Um, I'm more inclined to believe the man who wrote the confession letters from prison and was found when he was arrested with several articles in relation to John Bonet in his bag that it was something to do with him if it is an outsider um personally i don't i cannot get over the ransom note i just cannot get over the ransom note thank you clissy that some um people say was the mum's writing some experts have said yes it is the mum's writing some have said we can't conclusively say it it was so long, three pages long, like hundreds of words long. I've never seen another case with a ransom note like that. If you break into someone's house and you have murdered their child, you're not going to leave a ransom note. You've just killed her. Like, they're going to find her. They're not going to give you any money. So why are you going to stop in that moment and write a ransom note, which they timed, took about 15, 16 minutes, even wrote quickly, 
why are you going to do that? You're not going to get any, any ransom money. You've already killed the child. So unless you wrote it beforehand and then killed John Bonet in the house, why, if you've wrote a ransom note, are you then going to sexually assault and murder a child inside of the house? You were going to get out of there with her. Like, you've already wrote the ransom note. You might as well flee quickly. And then you've got no time constraints. And these sickos, that's what they want. They want to take their victim away. Um, I can't get over it. The the amount that was asked for in the ransom, exactly the same as, as the father's Christmas bonus, like £118,000 or whatever it was, which is such a weird amount. Why wouldn't you say I want 150k? I want 100k. Why are you going to ask for 118k? That's bizarre. Um, we just quickly, Debs, I'm about to do a case, but we were just quickly talking about John Bonet. Um, I've asked people to watch the new documentary, the free part one on Netflix, um, and we're going to open the boxes on Friday and come up and talk about it. Um, that might be a good one for you, Truth Seeker. If you want to branch out into true crime and not just a Jay Slater case, it's up to you. Um, if you wanted to come in the live and come up in the box and just meet a few people and that, that would be a good way to do it, I suppose. If you watch the new documentary and then came up and spoke about it. Um, I know it takes away some of the nervousness sometimes if you're just coming in with loads of other people to talk about it. Um, so I'm going to open boxes and talk about... People are saying whatever is on that new documentary is groundbreaking. It's changing people's minds. And I think it's changing people's minds about it being the family. Um, so no one who's watched it give us any kind of... Um, I think it's called like Cold Case John Billy Ramsey or something. Let me have a look. What really happened to John Bonet? That sounds um, John Bonet Ramsey on Netflix. Netflix. It's called Cold, Cold Case. Who killed John Bonet Ramsey? Um, so. Even the director here, it says in the media, the director of the Netflix documentary said, I'm really embarrassed I fell for a certain narrative. And after doing this documentary, I know what happened. So it looks like it's going to be really good. Um, yeah, Truth Seeker, we, everyone's so kind in here. Like, honestly, everyone loves you anyway. Like, I always big you up in here. I say, like, there's not many true crime creators that are kind. Um, most people want to bring you down when you've got a big account. But I've got a lot of time for you. and I've got a lot of time for Wax. And a couple of the women on here who do domestic violence live. Look, I always sit in their lives. Um, I've done quite a lot for Jack O'Sullivan from Bristol. Um, I've done numerous videos. And I've, I've, whenever I talked about Jay Slater, I always brought up Jack because he wasn't getting the publicity. And I knew I'd bring the people in with Jay Slater and then I could talk about Jack as well. Um, so I have talked about him quite a lot. I have not talked about um, Jack for a while. So perhaps I will... Um, try and talk about him tonight um after the Sarah Sharif case perhaps we'll do an update on the Jack case and just kind of get his picture out there again um I did see a video the other day of his brother speaking out um which was quite sad yeah um I think Jack's mum believes that he's possibly still alive and I I can't see any world in which that could be the case sadly I don't think Jack is still alive um there's obviously always a small chance. I saw a guy in Wales had been found today after 18 months. And from what I can see, he's been found alive. But I was trying to like get a, a positive answer I couldn't see. Um, but his mum was like, I'm so thankful everyone's helped us find him and get the appeal out. So she, there wasn't like, she wasn't sad. So I'm hoping he's been found alive. So it's always possible. Um, the Welsh man found after 18 months. Um... Shane Barnett was last seen outside Wales' biggest hospital in May of 2023. Um, he says he's been, he's been found alive. He's been found alive. Oh, okay, Anne. So he's been found alive. Um, I take it you, you know that he... Um, this was Shane. Um, and he has been found alive. I don't know where he's been, but this could be Jack. So we have to always bear in mind that obviously, and I think a mother's instinct is really powerful and his mum thinks he is alive. I think she's probably very hopeful that he is alive. Um, so what does it say? So it just said, um, on Sunday they posted, Shane Barnett, 49, was reported missing in May last year, has been found, thank you for everyone, but in a mental health, okay. At least he is alive though, and I really hope, Anne, that, that your cousin absolutely gets better and is glad to be home with his family. And what a Christmas present for your family, man. It gives me, it gives me goosebumps. I um, wish I could return all of the missing people to their family and just not knowing. The last 18 months must have been hell. Um, 
about that news that he's alive is is so rare um and i hope you he needs treatment i just hope he gets the treatment and hopefully near christmas there can be some kind of it's just got to be such a lovely feeling to know that he is okay like it's just it's rare to hear that especially in adult males um but it's all over the news today um loads of so yeah send down our love guys and, and do send his family our love as well we're so glad that he's been found so there's, there's always chance for jack right um i always did wonder when he had the the kind of confrontation at the party jack they said he kind of half fell down the stairs and i wonder could he have bumped his head could he have bumped his head and gone gone walk about or just ended up somewhere like in devon homeless on the streets and it happens sometimes it's very rare but it but it could have happened um and like i said we've always got to keep the hope until we know otherwise but i would i wish i wish i could give jack's mum more um attention and, and just for the police to be doing more because they, they failed him so badly bristol police um it's it's been a shit show what's happened for jack if you look at how much attention Jay Slater got in the media and then compare it to someone like Jack who not everyone even knows is still missing. I'm going to vape a second and now we'll start this case. I do a lot, Sarah. Whenever I hear a body's been found in the UK, whether it be the guy that had those bodies in Bristol in the suitcase, whether it be the, the body found on the field, I always think, is this Jack? thank you and then i think do i even want it to be jack because i don't want jack to be found dead but i also want his family to have answers so it's a really weird feeling um and then you hear the the phone data was given to the family and then you think okay this might be it now um but the police have just failed them like even when the dogs highlighted a search area and the police were like well, we're too busy um all families need answers, Mrs. Aaron. I just want them to have a good answer. But sometimes when you've got cases and people are missing for that long and there's no sign at all, you start thinking like, oh, can there even be good news here? But I think the man from Wales has just proved that there possibly can sometimes be good news to come from it. Right. Jackie Sullivan missing from Bristol since March. Um, yes, we're going to talk a bit about Jack tonight anyway. I will um, do a Jack live sometime today. Um, thank you whoever just suggested that again. Thanks, Gads. Um, it's really sad. Okay, let me put a picture up for this case. So we're going to talk about Isabella Wilden, and it is going to be a really sad case. Um, for anyone coming and asking about Sarah Sharif, the jury were out yesterday because one of them was sick. So they haven't been in court yesterday. They're back in today. Tonight at nine, we're going to do a Sarah Sharif live from start to finish the whole trial. We're going to start on day one of the trial and then go through the whole month of trial. Um, and we'll include what happened today in court. Um, so if moderators, is, is there moderators in here? If there is any moderators in here, um, if people ask about Sarah Sharif and just say tonight at 9pm, that'd be really helpful. Anyone else in the comments? Because I, I don't know what mods are in here, to be fair. Um, morning, Beth. Yeah, so that's what we'll do tonight. So we're going to talk about the brutal murder of two-year-old Isabella Wildham, this beautiful little girl here, um, because the trial has just happened and the verdicts are in and we're just waiting on sentencing. Thank you, Hayley. So a mother who wheeled the body of her dead toddler around in a pushchair for three days after she was beaten to death by her partner was this week cleared, cleared of her murder. Chelsea Gleason Mitchell, 24, choked back tears as the jury unanimously cleared her of murder before convicting her boyfriend, Scott Jeff, of the murder of two-year-old Isabella Wilden. Now, she was found guilty of allowing the death of a child, which is just going to absolutely horrify you when you hear the case. Scott Jeff was found guilty of murder and also two acts of cruelty to a child. Now, I just want to make this really clear that this mother met a new partner. He had been in Isabella's life just 36 days before he took her life. And the whole 36 days, he terrorised this little girl. His reason was because Isabella would not be potty trained. 
Now, I will tell you as a parent, um, no, it's fine, Meg. I will tell you as a parent that potty training is something a child will do when they are ready. That's what will happen. I trained all of my children several times because they weren't ready. And you get to a certain extent where you're like, she's not ready yet. And then you try again and they just take to it really easily when they're ready. No child will be forced. She was only two. So to potty train a child at two is very young anyway. Maybe starting getting a potty in the house, allowing them to become comfortable with the potty, kind of explaining having one in the front room so they've got that choice. That's why you have pull-ups and stuff because no child instantly comes into potty training without making accidents. Um, Tori was a bugger for it. Like, we ampoo, like, did not care. Um, would do it next to the potty. Never on the potty, always next to it. After sitting on the potty for an hour. Um, don't think I ever got mad at her having an accident. Thank you, Penny. Naturally, it just happens. They just, one day, they're like, oh, they just went for a wee on the potty. Oh my God, they've done a poo. Like, And then all of a sudden, they're like, I want to wear pants. And that's just, it's just natural. It's not It's not something that should be forced on any child. I found a cute Miss Sarah. You're like, oh, thank you for the log. Um, 100% H, and you'll know. You'll just know. Like, And, and most parents, we, we just like, we feel sad, to be fair, a little bit when they come out of nappies because we're like, oh, they're growing up. <laughs> like, just be a baby. Um, two is literally a baby. Yes, it happened in the UK. It's all over the UK, so I will get into where they were, what happened. They travelled around. They tried to avoid detection. It's like a present, like the cat bring it in. A six-week trial at Ipswich Crown Court heard how Isabella had been subjected to a regime of escalating brutality before she died in a homeless family unit. The court heard how Jeff had repeatedly beaten Isabella, leaving her with multiple fractures and soft tissue injuries and would give her cold showers as a punishment as he was frustrated about potty training. So, and I will just say, trigger one and throw out because it isn't really, thank you, Holly. Um, it is an awful, awful case. Um, let me just... Um, if you don't mind, Hol, I'll just add you as a moderator because I don't know if I've got any in the room um, so you can pin things because it'll be really helpful for me. Um, thank you. So literally, um, this is a brutal case, but what he would do would... Oh, thank you, Kira. I'm just finished my Barry's tea. Um, what he would do is if Isabella would not go toilet properly or had an accident, he would strap her into her buggy, push her buggy into the shower turn on freezing cold water and close the door and just leave her in there panicking. Um, I cannot think of anything worse than a small child being pushed into a shower, strapped in and panicking under freezing cold water and not being able to even breathe. And during those times, her mother would go outside with him to smoke weed and leave Isabella in there for different periods of time for, for half an hour, an hour in freezing cold water, just panicking. And no one could hear her scream in the shower. Um, I hope it gets worse. I hope it drops the soap every day. Jurors were told how her mother, who was a nursery nurse, stood back, watched and did nothing as Jeff's carried out his callous and cruel and ultimately fatal attacks. I'm going to put up a picture of the mother and her partner. Um, these are the two that have been in the court. Gleason Mitchell denied physically harming Isabella and said, I didn't do anything. The, wor the worst I did, she said, was allow him to repeatedly kick and punch my daughter while I sat there. That's all I did. 100% um, butterfly rose. Jeff's also denied harming Isabella, pointing the finger at her mother by saying he'd returned to the room to find the toddler seriously injured shortly before her death. But the jury rejected his account and he showed no emotion in the dock as he was convicted of two counts of cruelty to a child and murder. Gleason Mitchell earlier admitted causing or allowing her daughter's death and two charges of child cruelty. Mr Justice Garnham remanded both of them in custody before sentencing on December the 13th and told Jeffs, I will make it clear publicly that I am obliged by law to impose a life sentence and I will fix a minimum sentence for you to serve. The judge told the jurors that it had been a difficult trial and excused them for doing jury service for a further 10 years because of what they had to see. 
Isabella was believed to have died from her injuries on June the 26th of 2023, last year while staying with her mother and Jeff's in East Villa temporary accommodation unit in Sidegate Lane, Ipswich. But the couple kept her death a secret and carried on pushing her dead body in her chair with the hood pulled up to shield her face, even taking her corpse on a shopping trip to buy computer gaming equipment. Now, this is beyond awful and i've tried to say with the sarah sharif case people keep saying oh but she was they were using a hijab to cover her injuries so that's really in like that's because of islam it's not they used a snowsuit a baby snowsuit in june to cover up her injuries and the fact she was already dead they took her to mcdonald's dead a child they put the whole snowsuit on and then put the hood over her head so you could see like this much of her face and then covered her with blankets so it doesn't matter what culture you're from what religion you're from or where you're from People will find ways of covering up bruises. Baby P, they smeared his face with chocolate when social services would come. So it's exactly the same kind of thing. It's cowards trying to hide what they've done and stop people from hurting the child. This happened last year. It's just gone through courts. The couple kept her death a secret and carried on pushing her lifeless body in the chair. And they are seen on CCTV in, um, in cash converters, etc., trying to buy a gaming system that she wants to buy for her boyfriend despite knowing the body in her pushchair is her dead baby caused by her boyfriend so she wants to continue treating him she's seen in the pub on the night that she's killed he's killed her daughter in front of her and she's done nothing she's in laughing and joking and drinking with him they don't have the baby with them she's back in the homeless accommodation locked in the shower dead um and she's laughing she's joking she's flirting with him on the camera she she has no fear of him. She is unbothered at this point. Isabella was dead for four days before police found her body. Thank you, Sandra. On June the 30th, under blankets in a shower in the bathroom attached to their room. The discovery was made after a friend of Gleason Mitchell reported getting messages from her saying her daughter had died in her sleep three days earlier and was in a pushchair in the shower. The friend Joe Gardner said she did not know where Gleason Mitchell was staying, but inquiries led police to the East Villa unit operated by Ipswich Borough Council. Staff opened the door to room 15A where Gleason Mitchell and Jeff had been staying and officers were greeted by a very strong smell and the bathroom was then unlocked. Thank you, Georgia. Yeehaw, thank you. Mrs. Howe said PC Ryan Wegg saw an object in the shower area, blankets piled on top, and as he removed the last blanket, he saw the young, the little face of a young girl who was not moving. Thank you, Penny. He was aware of severe bruising on her face and she was cold and hard to the touch already. Isabella was declared dead at the scene by paramedics and a later post-mortem showed she had soft tissue injuries to her head, neck, torso limbs and back she also had a torn vagina um, and i'm so so sorry she also had fractures to both her wrists and a complex pelvic fracture involving several bones likely to have been caused by stomping some of this little baby's injuries were caused up to two weeks before she died with us with the others being caused just six hours before her death. Now, this is a case where she actually had bruising and contusions to the bone marrow inside of her bones. Um, this penetrated layers of skin, tissue, muscle, like the, the amount of um, force used to inflict these injuries on this little baby. Um, this is why I, I get frustrated that the mum just got done with allowing the death of a child. Like, she is your baby. Like, she was looking to you. You were the one who was known to her. This was your new boyfriend. You'd known him 36 fucking days. And you allow him to come into your house, into your home, and begin abusing your child. Thank you, Chloe. And you do nothing. You don't lift a finger to help her. Like... You flirt with him after he's killed her. You go for drinks with him. You go and buy him a gaming system. You don't care. And she fully should have been found guilty of murder. Fully. 
Mrs. Mrs. Howell said it was clear that Isabella had a num on numerous of episodes of violence inflicted on her over a period of time. Thank you. Her cause of death was given as bone marrow embolism due to the bone marrow from her fractures getting into her bloodstream and causing embolisms in her lungs, which reduced her capacity to breathe. 36 days, Bluebell. The mum had been with him before. Thank you, Chloe. Um, and she had broke up, got with, got with Isabella's dad and then got back with him 36 days before he took Isabella's life. There was many warning signs, right? From the day he moved into the house, on the day they re-met, she moved him straight in with, with Isabella, and he began telling everyone, I'm her real father, I'm getting a DNA test, I'm her father, refused to acknowledge the other father, the dad who loved her. Um, and he would constantly tell the mum, step out the way, I'm going to deal with this. Ain't no man ever going to deal with my children. Not even their own dad is ever, ever going to shout, scream or do anything to 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 my child. Um, but she just did nothing. And I, ju I just can't imagine. Now, I've actually spoken to people from Chelsea's hometown, the mother, um, this bitch. And they say she had been known to be horrible to children. They say that there's other things that had happened, see you later, um, other things that had happened around her that were very, very suspicious. And it's very unlikely she didn't take part in any of this. Um, how do you go to a pub with a man who has killed your child while your child's body is locked in a shower room of a homeless accommodation and be laughing and joking and flirting with him? They had sex while Isabella's body lay in the, in the shower dead. She didn't care. She absolutely did not care. She put her 36-day-old relationship before the care of her two-year-old daughter. And she admits, like, yeah, I did fuck all. If he was beaten, I would look the other way. I'd do nothing. I was never going to get involved. And she doesn't say I was scared or I was frightened. She just said, well, I wasn't doing anything. I did nothing. Miss Howells described Isabella was a healthy and contented and well-developed little girl before Jeff's came into her life in the May of 2023. Thank you, Penny. When he started a relationship with Gleason Mitchell. Remember, he met her in May of 2023 again. Isabella died in June. Literally five weeks. Four weeks, pretty much. She added, from the time, from the time that he came back into their life, until her death, Isabella was subjected to a regime of escalating brutality, which was callous and cruel and ultimately fatal. It's the prosecution's case that her mother, Chelsea Gleason Mitchell, stood back, watched, did nothing and allowed this to happen daily. The court heard how Gleason Mitchell grew up in Biggleswade in Bedfordshire and had got into a childcare apprenticeship at a nursery in town. She quickly fell pregnant early in her relationship with her former partner, Thomas Wilden, and had Isabella later returning to work at a nursery. But the couple's relationship fell apart in April of last year. Gleason Mitchell then went to live with her mother until May when she started a relationship with Jeff, who suggested that he might be the real father of Isabella as they had dated shortly before she realised she was pregnant. Later DNA tests proved he absolutely was not the father. Where it, they, she actually died in Ipswich, but she was from Biggleswade. Gleason Mitchell then went to live with her mother. She met this guy again. She left the nursery job on May the 24th and a week later headed off with Jeff and Isabella to stay at the Nelson Hotel in Great Yarmouth in Norfolk, Norfolk. And she was on the run because she didn't want anyone to know her child was being abused. She made a conscious effort to leave the safety of her mother's house with Isabella because the abuse had already started and she wanted to cover for her pig of a boyfriend rather than protect her daughter. So they went from place to place and every time that anything was suspected, they would just move on. And this was all in a really quick space of time. There was an opportunity, which we'll get into in a minute, for the police to save Isabella. Um, the police had been called and told that the family were staying in a tent on the beach for four days. And the police come and spoke to Chelsea and said, you need to find somewhere to live right now, otherwise we'll take your baby into custody. They, they refused to take the baby at that time. Um, and the next time the police were called, Isabella was already dead. Um, Gleason Mitchell told her sister Jade in a message that she was trying to get her head in the right place and was going to give her relationship with Jeff a go again 
The couple stayed for four nights in a hotel before renting a carriage van for four nights at the Haven Holiday Park in nearby uh, Caster on Sea, where they were captured on CCTV walking around on numerous occasions without Isabella. She's still alive at this time, but the fam the two of them are out at night time by themselves. They're down the beach by themselves and they do not have Isabella with them, which means that she was being left in a in a caravan for the whole day by herself. Well, they enjoyed their little caravan stay. Um, this to me, morning Scottish last, this to me is all of these facts are so baffling that she got away with murder. Um, that poor little girl, like any other parent in the world and just like deep in it. Like, I don't even go on holiday for, like, a day without my kids because I think I'll see so many things that I'll be like, oh, the kids would love that. They'd love the beach. They'd love this. They'd love that. Um, you're just always aware, like, oh, my children would absolutely adore this. You just feel guilty as a parent. Let alone leaving them behind in a caravan where you go and enjoy the new area. It's so strange. The couple, um, the court heard how Jeff had claimed he was getting DNA tests done to see whether he was Isabella's father and later falsely claimed to Jade, her sister, that a paternity test had proved that he was the father. They later checked into the St George Hotel in Great Yarmouth, used by homeless families on June the 9th, even though Gleason Mitchell's sister was pleading with her to come home to her and her mother. A receptionist at the hotel said they remembered Gleason Mitchell and Jeff regularly going outside to smoke, leaving Isabella in the room and returning smelling strongly of cannabis. Again, no one phoned social services or the police to say this was happening and that a two-year-old was being left upstairs in a homeless accommodation by herself while the parents went outside to smoke drugs. A 14-year-old boy who was staying in the same hostel with his mother would go into the couple's room to roll cannabis joints and would see Jeff kicking Isabella while she was in her pushchair and slapping her around the face with his open palm, which would make Isabella cry. Miss Howes added, Ch Chelsea Gleason Mitchell witnessed this, but did nothing and said nothing. The teenager said he then saw Jeff put Isabella's pushchair into the shower, turn on the freezing cold water, and then him, the mother and the mother's boyfriend would go outside to smoke cannabis outside, leaving the child in the shower, Isabella, with the cold water on by herself. Another adult resident in the hotel said she heard Isabella crying constantly one night and knocked on the door at 2am to ask them to stop her from crying. When she was let in, she saw Jeff repeatedly punching the wall with a towel in his hands. Again, didn't report it. The couple then left the hotel on June the 12th and started camping in a small tent on the beach at Caister, having earlier gone to Great Yarmouth Borough Council to ask for accommodation. And again, um, nothing's done, and they choose to leave the hotel, even though they've still got a place at the homeless hotel, because people are starting to wise up to what's going on. They're starting to be asked questions. Why is Isabella in the room on her own? Why is she crying all night? Why are you punching the wall? But nobody goes to the authorities. No one stops this. The court heard that Gleason Mitchell and Isabella had been offered accommodation by the council, but that Jeff wasn't allowed to go with them. So Chelsea had turned that down, saying, if I can't go with my boyfriend, I do not want to go. Again, she could have saved her daughter. If she was under any fear, this would be the perfect time to say, I've got accommodation, I've got to have somewhere safe for Isabella, um, and I'm going to go into it. She was offered it on the spot, and there was adults there when she was offered where she could have said, yes, please, we'll take that. Um, I don't want him to know where we are, but she chose not to do that again. Jeff had asked for work at the Old Hall Hotel at Castor, telling staff that he and Gleason Mitchell had been escaping from domestic violence, but was told no jobs were available. Miss Howe said they were shown great kindness at, by staff at this hotel, and they would give them free meals, free groceries, towels, let them have showers, and even give them £20 sometimes to help them feed Isabella. Isabella was seen to have been seen in this hotel in a pushchair wearing a zipped up puffer jacket with the hood up despite the hot weather. Again, they're trying to hide her injuries. One staff member was so concerned she did contact the police who carried out a welfare check on the mother and Isabella on the beach while Jeff was still back at the hotel. The officer told her that she had to accept any accommodation offered to her for Isabella, otherwise Isabella would be taken into care by the police However, that never happened. Yeah, they do, Lauren. After camping for four days on the beach, the couple moved to the Wild Duck Holiday Park in Belton in Norfolk, where they were once again seen walking around daily alone, leaving Isabella unsupervised. Hello, Diane. 
And again, to me, like, how is this not murder? If you leave a child constantly and consistently unattended at the age of two, something bad is going to happen. Likely, last year in June, likely, la similarly, if you put a child in a shower and turn on a cold shower, well, it's the water's in her face and you leave her to go outside and smoke cannabis, she is likely at some point going to drown. So how have you put her in those situations several times as the mother, but yet you're only being done for allowing the death of a child? It sounds too nice that that allowing the death of a child. It's kind of like you didn't really do anything, but that's OK. Um, you're just as bad. What happened to joint enterprise? If you're there and someone's beating the shit out of a child, your child and you don't do anything. You're the fucking problem. You're the mother. You're the one that Isabella thought would keep her safe. It was your job. You had her. And when you left your mum's house, um, when you left her your her mum's house, you could have left her there. You also could have given her to her father. You could have gave her to social services, to the police that have stopped you on the beach. When that police officer said, if you don't find accommodation, we'll take Isabella, I would have said, take her now. He wasn't there. He was back at the hotel getting drunk. So at that point, as a mother, you should have known you were no longer looking after her. You were a pile of shit. You should have said, take her. I don't want her. I'm staying with my boyfriend. And I'm not going to accept any accommodation. It doesn't take him. Why not have one thing about you? You knew if the police took her off you that day, they would see the bruises and the extent of the injuries already caused this baby. And the police at that stage should have had a duty of care to check her body out and check that she was okay and see if Isabella was responding properly, etc., etc. I would have called a social worker down to the scene and said, can you do a welfare check on this child just while we're here because we're a bit concerned. She's been sleeping in a, in a tent. She she is, you know, in a situation where they're moving up and down the country. The number one sign of child abuse in this country, Charlene Downs, other cases, is the family moved to new areas. As soon as schools pick up on it, as soon as things start happening, they move to a new hate neighbourhood, they move around. Um, they don't really want to be in a, in a situation where people are picking up on the abuse, they just move around. They were living a homeless lifestyle with a baby, um, even though they had places they could have lived. It's just very strange. They left that site on June the 19th and caught a train to Ipswich with Isabella wearing her puffer jacket and sunglasses to apparently hide her black eyes after being offered a place at East Villa. Voice notes made by Jeff on his phone on June the 21st show him saying he was fucking fuming that Isabella kept wetting herself despite his efforts to potty train her. A video clip that Gleason Mitchell, Chelsea, her own mother, chose to film. She had several videos of the early hours of June the 22nd where she's filming Isabella lying motionless in her cot with two massive black eyes. Why are you filming it, you sick bitch? Why are you filming it but not doing it, doing anything with it? You're not sending it back to your mum, to the police. You're absolutely filming her as if, like, as if you're a mother thinking, oh, look at her sleeping, like, you absolute animal. You saved those videos on your phone, despite the fact she was already dead by the time they were found. Thank you, Lisa. CCTV from the unit showed her repeatedly being pushed around in her chair, wearing sunglasses with the hood up, and always her head would be concealed. Jeff made a Google search on June the 24th, saying, what do you do if a two-year-old is bleeding from her vagina? The court heard how Jeff had texted a friend, Hannah Smith, on the evening of June 26th, saying, I am actually so stressed, I can't cope. She replied, why, what's up? And he responded, absolutely everything. Earlier in the day, Jeff had done a Google search asking, what happens when my child is, not, is breathing but not responding? And again, this shows on June the 24th, you knew this little girl was in desperate need of help. She was absolutely starting to break down and you had 40 hours as her mother where you could have saved her life and you google searched and did fuck all um then we know that later after that message saying what happens when my child is breathing but not responded sometime that day isabella passed away the court then heard that cctv pictures of isabella was being wheeled around for four days after her death to McDonald's, to cash converters, to buy a PlayStation. She was taken in lots of places. 
um, super drug she was taken to, although she was already dead, to cover their own back. Hey, June. Miss Howes added Scott, Jeff and Chelsea Gleason Mitchell are in effect pushing around a dead child in a pushchair. Miss Howes said they had taken Isabella's body to the nearby Apple Green service station to buy a bottle of lemonade while they were both laughing and joking together just after midnight on the, on the night of June the 26th. It would have been just hours after she passed away and the mum is out laughing and joking, buying themselves something nice to drink. CCTV at the unit showed Jeff pushing Isabella's body in her chair with Gleason Mitchell smiling by his side and laughing with this man as they headed out to the nearby Royal George pub just after 7pm on June the 28th when Isabella had already been dead for two days so they could enjoy a drink together. The following day on June the 29th they took Isabella's body shopping in town. They visited cash converters, cash exchange Xbox, um, an Xbox shop and also um, Superdrug where they bought Xbox equipment and chargers. Obviously she wanted to buy her daughter's murderer presents as well, which all, by the way, came out of Isabella's benefits for a child. Um, it's horrific, isn't it, Holly? 36 days between the day that the mum got into a relationship with him and he killed her. 36 days. Um, they're both 24 now, Scout, so they were like 23 when it happened. It was Isabella's money. The only money the mum was entitled to was for Isabella. Miss Howes added, they put the purchase in a yellow plastic bag, which they put in the pushchair on top of Is Isabella's head. She said that Gleason Mitchell messaged Miss Gardner that evening, confirming that Isabella was dead, saying, oh, she stopped breathing in her sleep. Her friend urged her to go to the police, but Gleason Mitchell uh, replied, I can't go to the police. Isabella is covered in bruises and has two black eyes and I'll get in trouble if I do go to the police. Instead, she said they planned to bury her when they could find a good spot and hope for the best that nobody would ever find her. The couple told other residents of the unit that Isabella was with her grandparents in Ipswich as they went out in a taxi, they went to the pub, they went out for dinner together, they went to Ipswich Town Centre. They were caught on a train to Bury St Edmunds where they went to the town's J.D. Weatherspoons and had what would be their last lunch together. They were arrested on suspicion of murder in Bury St Edmunds in the early hours of July the 1st. Jeff made no comment when interviewed by police but gave a prepared statement on July the 2nd denying any responsibility for Isabella's death and insisting he had never beaten or harmed her in any way but that he had tried to revive her. He said he had started to notice bruising on her body five days before her death, but he had accepted when Chelsea said there was nothing to worry about. Jeff claimed he had woken up to find Isabella floppy and unresponsive and could not find a pulse. He said it quickly became apparent to him that she had died. He accepted they should have called emergency services, but had not thought to do so. He said, having not con this is his thing, having not contacted the police or ambulance service initially, it became harder to do so afterwards. Although I knew we'd have to do it at some stage, in part at least our failure to do so arose from us being in denial about what happened. In a later statement given before the post-mortem was carried out, he suggested that Isabella may have hurt herself by slipping in the shower and that he believed her death was a tragic event arising from unseen natural causes. Yeah, okay, you're going to outsmart fucking pathologist, aren't you, you fucking piece of shit? Gleason Mitchell told police that Jeff had beaten Isabella constantly until her death, punching and kicking her from head to toe, hitting her backside with a shoe and making her scream and cry. The assaults had left her daughter covered in bruises with two black eyes, bloodshot eyes and a soft spot on her head. She added that Jeff would push her out of the way if she tried to intervene and she didn't want to do anything to help Isabella due to her, her own mental health. Um, so that's, that is Chelsea's... Um, excuse well i actually have quite severe mental health so it was easier for me to do nothing um i don't give a fuck about your mental health chelsea in fact i hope that you have the worst mental health for the rest of your life i hope you are haunted by her screams and i hope when you get out of prison you'll be into death and i'm just gonna be honest um gleason mitchell who has adhd also claimed obviously you're gonna bring that up claimed that he gave she said that her partner gave isabella cold showers and would always force feed her until he could make her be sick. She claimed the abuse started when they went to stay in Great Yarmouth and that when Isabella had wet her nappy, um, wet her nappy, like her nappy that you're supposed to actually go toilet in as a baby at two, every time she would wet her nappy, 
he would threaten to kill Isabella, saying if this carries on, I, she is going to get killed. Gleason Mitchell added in her interview that Jeff wanted to bury Isabella in a forest or in a lake, and he'd gone. To, they'd gone to bury St Edmunds to find a spot to kill to to bury her body. The court heard how Isabella was found to have low traces. This is Isabella, the baby. She had low traces of cocaine in her system. And it suggested that she had been given or had been around crack cocaine when it had been smoked. She also had traces of cannabis in her system when she was found. And so he has just been found guilty of two acts of cruelty to a child and murder. Chelsea was only found guilty of allowing the death of a child, which she pled guilty to in order to, to get away from the murder charge and two acts of cruelty towards a child. Um, she will likely get a sentence from anywhere from four to 20 years. Um, why is... Um, why is someone reporting my life for bullying? Um, whichever, whoever it is in here, when we're covering a case and getting justice for a little girl and talking about what happened to her and you're reporting my life for bullying, I, I find that quite concerning. Um, unless it's somebody's family member who is involved in this case, I can't understand how this would be bullying. Um, yeah, so on December the 13th, we will hear... Um, yeah, I'm going to have to restart the live. Idiots. <laughs> Thank you. I got reported for bullying, so I have to come back on. Um, despite the fact we're actually talking about case, not anyone else. Thanks for the heart me, Jade. Thank you, everyone, for the heart me. Um, you can imagine who it is, Sal, doing it. The people who um, keep holding lives about me. Are you okay, Jade? Um, oh, because there's haters on the app that you're not allowed to do well or have a big account, so we'll just let it go this time. Um, yeah, so I just wait for people to come back in. Her surname is Gleason Mitchell. Thank you, guys. I love you all too. Um, yeah. I know, Meg. That's a sad thing because we're actually talking about a two-year-old little girl today as well, which obviously is important that Isabella is known about. And I've been wanting to cover her case for a while, but I'm so focused on Sarah Sharif at the moment because that's the case that nobody seems to know about. Um, obviously, because... You know, probably because we're in the UK and, and, and Sarah Sharif is a little girl, half from Pakistan and half from, from Poland. So it's almost like people say um, she's not our problem. So I've made her my problem at least. Um, so I wanted to wait for this case to be finished so I could talk about it all the time. Thanks, Meg. Yeah, I just we're just not going to buy into the drama and we'll just let people do what they're going to do. Um, we'll always come out on top in this community because... Um, because what we do is, is good stuff and we are we are, we have a really nice community of good people. So we're going to get haters, but we just let them carry on. It's not a big deal. We'll continue doing well and, and they'll continue hating. It's one of those things. Um, yeah, so the pair are back in court um, on the 13th of December to be sentenced, which will be a big day. It worries me a little bit that they've set the sentence in so far in the future. I think, thank you, Meg. Thank you, Sia. I think they must be getting mental health reports and I really just don't want them to consider it. I honestly just don't understand in this country and if I could have my way, I would literally ban all kind of talk of mental health in the courts. Now, unless it's something like schizophrenia and you've been hearing voices and it's out of your control, I don't really care if you're anxious, depressed or anything else because I'm all of those things and I don't hurt anyone. Um, and we have to, we have to wait up, yeah? We have to weigh up with the innocence and the vulnerability of the victim who is two. So she didn't have any choice to ever even grow up to, to consider things like anxiety and depression and all of those things. And the fact that the mum has ADHD, so do I, and I use it for good. Um, I talk a little bit faster. Um, my ideas are all over the place. I, I don't have any evil thoughts. I would never hurt anyone. I've never shouted at my children. Um, I have depression, I have anxiety. I have trauma left over from domestic abuse. I've never, ever been in a situation where I think, oh, I've just gone too far with my kids or I've allowed someone to. So I don't see it as an excuse. A hundred percent, Holly. Like any kind of um, any kind of adult 
who can do this. The one thing in this court, this court case that frustrates me the most is the mum hasn't been found guilty of murder. You absolutely could have stopped this at any time. And you could have got her help at any time. You were even confronted by a police officer who said, thank you, Beverly, we could take her into care if you're not going to find her permanent home. At that point, you could have said, take my daughter. You knew you didn't want her. You knew that you'd moved on with your new boyfriend. Um, and you didn't give a fuck about her. So just give her to someone else. Like, you should have said at that point, please take her. She's not safe with us. Like... He wasn't even there at the time. So if you didn't tell the police where he was, you could easily go and met up with him and go on the run and do whatever you want to do. Um, but you could have saved her. Um, yeah, see, I um, I cover cases from people who have all different conditions, like BDP, bipolar, um, EU, PD and stuff like that. But those people are just those people. Like, I also know people have all of those conditions or are really lovely. Um ADHD is like a superpower, I think. Same with autism. It's something where you can definitely use it for good. And that's why I research. Researching cases actually helps keep my mind still for a minute. Um, where you can definitely use it for good. And that's why I research. Researching cases actually helps keep my mind still for a minute. Um, that afterwards, I just kind of rally off in different directions because I literally, one thing can catch my attention and take it away. Um, but while I'm researching cases, I'm talking about cases, I'm very focused. And I also have an almost photographic memory for the cases I cover. Oh, it's Lupin. And you're gone. I'm back in a minute. I'm sure. Let me know when we're back. Back now. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I almost have like a photographic memory for the cases I cover. So when I'm um, talking about Sarah Sharif, I can pretty much tell you every single thing without even looking at notes, like dates, times, because I can literally... Um, throw myself into the cases but i'm going to put some bigger pictures up so we can see the pictures um diana get it like I, there's so many um so many people who go oh you know i did do this but i was worried about my mental health how do you use that as an excuse by the way you didn't step up to help your daughter because you felt depressed no wonder you felt fucking depressed look what you had happening in your home look what you were allowing like how were you living with yourself she was sobbing as she got found innocent i thought you weren't sobbing for your daughter when she was dead you weren't sobbing for her when you were putting carrier bags of shopping on her head in the buggy um you weren't crying then but you're crying because you've got off with it now um hey you should be a crime investigator i'd like to be a private investigator as well but i just wouldn't like to work for the police because i think the police let so many families down and there's there's so many times where i've seen people families of victims of crime um just let down i don't want to be part of that system the, the crime system is so broken, the justice system is broken, and I don't really want to be part of something that's so broken that's hurting people. That's why I like what I do now, and people go, oh, you think you're a social detective? Like, I have the freedom to cover whatever cases I want to on here. I have a freedom to get behind any case. I can come live and rant for 10 minutes about what I want to happen to Sarah Shreve's killers, about how I want them to be raped and abused in prison. I can do that, and no one can stop me doing that. As a police officer, I'd have to be very to the point. Um, I have freedom of speech, and I can absolutely switch from being a criminologist to a mother in seconds and i can tell you straight away everything i would have done to protect sarah sharif and to this day i live with that little girl in my heart and i always will um same with all of these victims like isabella like i would have done a million times over um that's it jessica like in the um in the true in, like when i did criminology my plan was to go into the justice system like i honestly wanted to go into the justice system um and then i started going to trials as part of my degree and going into the prison and working in dartmoor prison and i just saw how broken things were and i thought could i ever sit there across from a woman who'd been through rape and go your word against his i just could never do it i just could never be a part of that at all um it's not for me. I'm just going to put the pictures bigger so everyone can see the pictures from this case. Um, I want people to see, particularly... Really, Zoe? I worked in there quite a few years ago. Um, I want people to see, particularly, um, not only Isabella's face, but I want you to concentrate on her mother's face. Because her mother will be walking amongst us very soon. Even if it's four years, five years, six years... This is a young woman who will only be about 30 when she's released from prison and she's dangerous to children. If you can be a nursery nurse and a mother and allow these things to happen to your child and do nothing, people need to know who she is. 
And I've heard from people in their hometown that she's really not a nice person. Um, this isn't a one-off for, for Chloe. Uh, Chelsea, sorry. So this is Isabella, absolutely sweetest little baby. This is her with her mother before the 36 days of hell. He looks like a rat, doesn't he? An absolute rat. And do you know what makes me a little bit happy? What makes me a little bit happy is what a little weasel like that is going to get in prison. He ain't going to be able to stand up for himself at all. He's 24 years of age and he is going to come up against some fucking scary motherfuckers in prison. And what is he going to do? What is he going to do? He will become somebody's bitch very quickly in prison, I can assure you. Um, this is where um, her body was found in the shower. This is the mother. And people need to remember her face because she can easily get out at 30 and go on to have more children. And she's one of those people. She's so shameless that she'll be all over the front of the newspaper saying, I want my new baby to know all about who Isabella was. She should never, ever, ever have the chance to ever give birth to another child, ever. There should be something people can do to make sure that she can never give birth again. They're young enough that they will go on, no matter how long they spend in prison, to live a whole other life. This was their mugshots. Sterilised, kicked in the chaff, one of them. Um, I would literally... There's people... There's, there's, there's women in this world that can't have children who absolutely want a child more than anything, who would love a child and look after a child. Married couples, family members, um, members of the LGBTQ plus community, I think I've just said that wrong, um, who absolutely are trying every day to bring a baby into this world, who would absolutely love the baby. Um, you know, the people in the room now are saying that's me. And people like this get to have babies. Um, It's, um, do I mean, Shea Brown, 15 Liverpool since the 3rd of the 10th. Been one please, please, nothing else. Let me write it down, Kath. Oh, I've done, I think, let me have a look at Shea first before I say this. I want to be positive. Yes, I'm going to be really, really honest. Um, so I put out an appeal for Shay. I was then contacted by a close friend of mine who works as a child advocate and knife crime expert. And they assured me that Shay is absolutely fine. Um, he doesn't want to go home for reasons where he feels not safe at home. Um, and so I took my appeal down. I'm going to be really honest. I am not going to appeal for a child to go home that may not be safe home. So I am. I took it down and I speak to this expert who is on TikTok and is UK known for protecting children who has regular contact with Shay. Um, so I actually do speak to him and I say, let me know if you need me to put up a post. He says, look, Shay goes missing all the time, Hayley. This isn't the first, fourth or sixth time. Because I've actually done another video for Shay last year. Um, and he is okay. Um, this is Shay here. Um, I covered another case last year where a young girl, she was 15, she had gone missing four times over a year. And it got to the stage where Sophie was saying this is the same girl again and I was saying yeah she's missing again um and it transpired that she was running away from home for a reason um which I won't get into it because it's not my case it's hers um so I stopped covering her case because I thought I'm not going to return a child to abuse um and she was running away to stay with family members and stuff so I just kept taking the videos down um unfortunately there are some children who are running because they're little terrors or because they just don't want to stick to the rules there are some children that are running because they're not safe at home. Um, it's a hard one because you have to kind of consistently consider that you may be returning people back to something that's not great. Um, yeah, I'll keep checking, Diane. I'll keep checking and messaging and saying, um, 
can I just check um can I just check that he's still fine um I believe so friends it's a hard one the police have put out one appeal the family haven't really put out any appeal um but if I hear from someone who I've been live with before who I know is somebody who is winning awards for the work they do for children and he tells me Shay's safer if he doesn't go home I'm gonna just take down the appeals um I think that's really important I'm confused here what's up Yassi um mod uh not today top girl I'll mod Gavin all day. I feel like you're rude to me around the app and I'm, I'm, um, I may be overthinking it, but I don't like it. Uh, Angie actually announced that she really likes me today. So I'm actually going to put orange hearts in my name. The last thing I needed was for her on the day of Hills Brigade to actually announce that she really likes Hayley Comet, um, to be fair. So, we were, oh, we were just talking about sometime children go missing in the UK and you may speak to people who say that the child is safe but not safe to return home like there is something going on at home i.e abuse etc and the child has chosen to run away from home and is in a safe place um it may not be somewhere their family agree with them being i.e there'll be a police repeal out but if i've got a professional telling me that the child is safe and, and doesn't want to return home then i have a duty to take down the posters because i the last thing i want to do is return a child to an abusive situation so you have to weigh it up in this case with Shay, I know for a fact the teenage vi victim's advocate who I spoke to regularly lays eyes on Shay and knows where he is and who he's with. Um, and he is safe. And that's all I want. Shay's 15, he's nearly 16, and he is safe right now. So I chose to take down all of my videos about him. Um, oh, Ellie, please don't run away if, if you're not going to be safe. If you're not going to be um, safer, please consider things like that. Like... If anyone's in here and you're thinking about running away, like, unless you've got somewhere safe to run to, please don't do that. It's not Kiki, and I have to, like, be able to live with myself. Um, you know what I mean? The little girl I covered last year had been missing four separate times. I started thinking, this is weird. Like, this is really weird um, that she keeps running away. It's the same girl over and over again. So I went over to Facebook and found her the police appeal, and the comments told a really different story. And then the little girl popped up in the comments and was saying to her, Mum, I ain't coming home. I ain't coming home after last time. Not happening. Um, and the mum was saying, look, come home. He's left the home. And I'm thinking, who's left the home? And the little girl saying, you said that last time. I'm not coming home if he's there. And I just thought, I'm taking down these posters. Like, she's 15, nearly 16. And there's something very weird going on here. Um, and I, I'm not going to put up an appeal for a child. I think I'm returning to an abusive situation. And it could just be like the mum's got a new boyfriend. Like, he's not very nice. It could be sexual abuse. It could be physical abuse. But I'm not taking part in it. Um, and the police stop appealing for the same children to come home time and time again. If someone's been missing more than once, start asking questions. Why don't she want to go home? Why would she rather be living out of bags in friends' houses and on the run rather than coming home? Like, you've got the mum and the daughter arguing in the comments. It's on the police post. Like, you can see it, because I can see it. Um, so, and the police the next day are putting up another appeal. And it's like, what are you doing? Yes, if anyone comes in tonight, we're going to do the Sarah Sharif case today um, at nine o'clock. We're going through the whole court process. So from the first day they were in the court, keep banging everything, from the first day they were in the court until now. So we're going to go through all of it. Exactly, we have three local teens missing every month. No one asks, exactly, Reigns. Like, if I see a child missing more than once, then I start looking at it and thinking, why is she missing? Like, and I will always say, um, hey, please take your time and take breaks. I'm good, thank you, Chloe. Um, I was saying at 14, no one asks why. I, I get a cat, like, literally, um, I just think, like, do I want to be the reason? Because some of the posts I put out for the little girl that went missing four times, the first video I put out for her had 250,000 views, and I thought, it's likely that one of the people that watched my video would be the one returning her home. Um, especially when it's, you know, the police post on, on Facebook may have, like, 100 shares, and then I go and take the post, I blow it up all over TikTok, and then you think, what am I returning her home to every single time? It's a massive responsibility, and as a mum, it's one I take very seriously. Um, so justice for Sarah Sharif, absolutely. We're doing the Sarah Sharif case today, the whole court period. So if anyone's missed any of the, um, vital information, I hope so, Kiki. I will speak to her because a, a couple of people have asked because I know I've been doing it in bits. So every day I go live and update people to what's happened that day in the trial. But I want to go all the way through it because we should be going out of court today to, to start going to a verdict stage. 
Um, I need everyone in the UK to start screaming her name was Sarah Sharif, man, because somebody's got to do something. And I just hope she gets the right outcome in the court. Poor Sarah, yeah. It's just, um, nothing's broken this morning, but we know they weren't in court yesterday because one of the jurors was ill. Um, so they're back in this morning um, with Faisal Malik's defence statement. What about her sisters? I'm going to try to push it, but I just don't imagine her sisters will ever reach any kind of justice, which makes you really sick. Hey, Francesca. Um, it makes you really sick to know that, but, you know, I think it's going to be really hard to... What is going on? What did it say? Rank up to become a gift ambassador of the Four of Bean gift series. Try to win swag and other rewards. What does that mean? Are you sure what's going on here? Oh, cheeky chippies at number five. I don't even know if people know who did it. Um, 11th of the 12th. Someone say it's been moved back to January now, Nature and Navigator. Do you know if the other children? I assume so. I assume so because I found I've been accused of abusing children before and it seems like he just reigned a house of terror. Um, I don't know how badly it was though. We just um let me just take a screenshot of that for a minute. Cool, thank you. We're popular number fifty four as well. Thank you guys for all the team bracelets and the heart as well. Um, cheese? What did I say about cheese? Did I say something about cheese? Oh, I was screenshot. I was screenshotting that competition thing up there. Um, that it says something about bean points, but I just want to send it to Alicia. Um, uh, it's called. Uh, I'm just baiting Alicia out. You're on the loo, Nanny. How's that going? <laughs> you guys weren't even in the picture. I was taking a picture of this, this shot up there. Um, so, Fee, there is no latest in Sarah Sharif case because they weren't in court yesterday because one of the jurors was sick. But they will be back in court tonight, uh, today, sorry. And tonight at nine o'clock, we're doing the full Sarah Sharif case. So we're going from day one of the trial all the way through. Um, we're going to do that. So I just want everyone to know the whole case. And I know some people have lost a little bit of interest because they've missed parts. They've been at work. Some of my moderators work all day, so they've kind of missed out on all of it. Um, and there's not always the chance to go over to observers and like re-watch lives and stuff, if, unless you've really committed. Um, I've got a meeting with... The police and social services about my PhD today. Oh, Amanda, good luck. I really hope it goes really well. Um, we need some positive people who are really child focused in those in those types of agencies, because from what I can see with social workers, like they see a lot of shit, to be fair. But at some point, they kind of switch off and just kind of lose focus on why they're there. Um, and I just want to see some good social workers coming up. Um to keep children safe it's so important so so important you have to policy change professional like 100 percent. i hope i hope you get it it's amazing um cindy message me after the live or kira and we'll send you out the discord link um 
I think most mods are on top of the Discord link being asked, but sometimes it goes through to people's other outboxes and people say to me, like, I've asked your mods two or three times. So I'm like, there's no way they would have ignored you unless they're not getting the message. Um, Hayley, have you watched the name of the documentary where you were talking about earlier? Um, it was called... Um, it's called The Cold Case, The Murder of, um, The Murder of John Ramsey. 